Wonder Woman 1984 is an action adventure fantasy film starring Gal Gadot, Chris Pine, Kristen Wiig, Pedro Pascal, Robin Wright, and Connie Nelson amongst others. The sequel to 2017's Wonder Woman is directed by Patty Jenkins once again. Set in 1984, Diana Prince, aka Wonder Woman, played by Gal Gadot, now lives in relative obscurity as an anthropologist at the Smithsonian. But she still saves lives and beats up baddies on the side. She encounters a businessman, Maxwell Lord, played by Pedro Pascal, who is in search of an ancient artifact. However, her new colleague, Barbara Ann Minerva, played by Christian Wig, is smitten by him, leading to a whole set of problems for Wonder Woman. Okay, I know I've explained that plot to make it sound like a rom-com, but that's honestly because I didn't want to reveal more than I need to. Needless to say, this is a highly anticipated sequel that one would imagine would build on the best aspects of the 2017 smash hit, mainly its charm and sense of wonder, while addressing some of its issues, particularly the villain problem, and an over cgi third and final act. Now I'm going to get straight to it and tell you that those problems still exist. In fact, they are inexcusable now because numerous reviews prominently highlighted these drawbacks the first time around. One would think that the creators would look into that and I'll come back to it later. Instead, I will talk about what works for this film because there is a lot to like in it. Gal Gadot has now played Wonder Woman since 2016 and that experience is really starting to pay off. She delivers her best rendition of Diana Prince so far bringing immense heart to her performance. She also balances that with her incredible presence as the Amazonian warrior princess and demigoddess. Some of her scenes invoke childlike wonder and amazement, which tremendously elevates the film. Additionally, her chemistry with Chris Pine continues to be stunning and their scenes together are heartwarming to say the least. Chris Pine's return as Steve Trevor gives the writers Jeff Johns, David Callaham, and Patty Jenkins herself, an opportunity to turn the fish out of water trope on its head, with Diana giving Steve the tour of American culture and society in 1984. This does lead to some humorous moments, but not as much as they'd like. Thankfully, Chris Pine and Gal Gadot are just great to watch together, so it isn't much of an issue. What is a problem, though, is how one of the villains in the film is treated. Cheetah or Barbara Ann Minerva, goes to the nerd-turned-hot-girl trope in the movie. Again, that in itself isn't a problem because Kristen Wiig pulls it off convincingly. She is actually quite relatable to the character and, for the most part, you will go along with Barbara's motives. But then, it all builds up to the final confrontation and it's an inexplicable mess set in the dark which is supposed to hide the unconvincing CGI for the Cheetah character. There's just no excuse for it in 2020. On the other hand, the second villain in the film, Maxwell Lord, played by Pedro Pascal, is far more entertaining. The actor, who is having a stellar year, takes the antagonist with relatively primary motives and makes him fill the screen every time he shows up. Yes, the performance is slightly hammy, but it works in the best way possible. This is also a good time to talk about the film's tonality which is an homage and throwback to 1978's Superman. In fact, the reasons why you will either love, like or dislike this film is based on that. Some of its best parts are the themes of hope and general faith in humanity. But then, the overtly comic book approach might be a bit overdone for older viewers. That's why I'm going with 3.5 stars for Wonder Woman 1984. Look. This year definitely could do with a lot more positivity and the film has an ample amount of feel-good factor going for it. From start to finish, it's easy to root for Diana Prince yet again, thanks to Gal Gadot's performance and director Patty Jenkins keeping that feeling at the forefront. Also, Hans Zimmer weaves his magic with the score, making it all feel larger than life as it should be. Yes, there are issues with the film's script and some of the dialogue is cringy as is the CGI. But I get the feeling that the creators were aiming for a younger audience this time around and kids will definitely get the most out of the superhero film. Despite its various issues, you will still leave the theatre with a smile on your face and I think that's what matters the most this year 
especially during this festive season. Guys, that's my take on this film. Please feel free to leave your comments below. And if you do choose to step out during this pandemic to watch a film, please make sure to do it responsibly and keep your masks on. For more information and news on entertainment, stay tuned to E! Now.